Uh, I knew this day would come. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 underrated sitcoms of all time. Was it as good for you as it was for me? <laughs> for this list, we're looking at the most overlooked or underappreciated situational comedy series ever made. Is there any criminally underrated sitcom you want to arrest us for forgetting? Make your case in the comments. Number 10. Just Shoot Me Workplace sitcoms are a staple of the medium, but Just Shoot Me takes an interesting approach by being set at a made-up fashion magazine blush. So, how's your mom? Great. Still in Palm Springs. God, with that desert sun, her skin must look like a belt. A lot of comedy ensues from the magazines and owner Jack Gallo's superficial values clashing with the feminist views of his daughter Maya. Meanwhile, the rest of the cast, photographer Elliot, vain former fashion model Nina, and sarcastic secretary Finch, all riff off each other brilliantly. There are a hundred birds in my office. Uh, well, 99. One of them took a sip of your orange juice and flew into a fan. Unfortunately, despite strong ratings for most of its run, NBC moved the show around so much that a dedicated following never really materialized. Plus, it isn't discussed much these days anyway. However, if you give Just Shoot Me a shot, we bet you will not regret it. Donnie, what the hell? Oh, crap. Now I gotta get a job. Number 9. Raising Hope Creator Greg Garcia is known for cooking up some quirky, overlooked sitcoms, but perhaps his most underrated is Raising Hope. What are you doing? She gets an hour a day to exercise. An hour? You should check with the warden. I get an hour and a half. An hour for me, and a half hour for me and Jimmy's baby. Following an unfortunate one-night stand with a serial killer, 23-year-old Jimmy Chance unexpectedly becomes a father and is left raising the titular hope. Luckily for him, and quite comically for the rest of us, he eventually gets the help of his outlandish extended family. Did you see that? She smiled. Hope smiled at her. Huh? Maybe your baby's not a bitch. Well, you're stuck with your dead tooth little girlfriend now. Not only is it free daycare, she's the only person your kid likes. A great modern twist on classic family sitcoms, Raising Hope balances laughs and surprisingly heartwarming moments to create a show that may be easy to miss, but impossible to forget. It is an absolute tragedy that such a well-rounded sitcom got the axe so abruptly. I still want my birthday money back. It was a gift from my brother Sal. It would break his heart if he knew you stole it. I know she had a brother named Sal. She doesn't. Number 8. The Drew Carey Show You know, the beautiful thing about sitting in this bar here in Cleveland is that not one of these women has a chance in hell of meeting Brad Pitt. So, here's to us. Their cold little splash of reality. Before he became a game show host, Drew Carey was one of many stand-up comedians who got the opportunity to star in their own sitcom. The series follows the personal and professional life of a fictionalized version of Carrie, who works as an assistant director in a retail store. Need that position filled by Monday, Carrie. Customers are complaining that they have to wander from counter to counter looking for help. Yes, sir, Mr. Bell. You know, it's always a pleasure to talk. <laughs> While it lasted nine years, The Drew Carey Show suffered a significant ratings drop in its seventh season and never recovered. Since then, it's mostly faded into obscurity, although that may be due to the fact that most of the cast members are now more famous for other things. Plus, it's not so easy finding it to watch these days. Still, The Drew Carey Show, like one of its theme songs, definitely rocks. Number 7. The Hughleys I'm sorry, do you two need some time alone? <laughs> Oh, baby, I was talking to them, but I, I was thinking about you. No, that's okay, honey, because me and that new oven, we've been having our own little thing. Speaking of sitcoms starring comedians, The Hughleys is a show that revolves around comic D.L. Hughley. In the series, Hughley plays a version of himself, who moves his family into a wealthy suburban and predominantly white neighborhood. I was going to ask if your husband is a black male, approximately 5'9", who likes to jump out of shrubbery and frighten children. <laughs> But uh, apparently I have the right house. The show tackles racial issues in an introspective yet hilarious way, making it feel like a natural successor to the Jeffersons or a forerunner to Blackish. Here, Nikki. We didn't have any Perrier, so I've given you a straw so you can make your own bubbles. Way to think on your feet, Mike. Was I talking to you? A switch in networks made it tough to establish an audience back in the day, but if you're in the mood for a turn of the millennium family comedy, The Hughleys is great no matter the decade. Number 6. Black Books Ah, oh, nerds. I mean, you 
is a very nice jacket, but what are you going to do about your accounts? I don't know. Will you do them? Oh, well, look. You got that wrong for a start, because you divide by ten there. Hopping across the pond, Black Books follows Bernard Black, the cantankerous owner of the titular London bookshop. Also featured on the show are his relentlessly optimistic friend slash assistant Manny and his best friend Fran. Be on the lookout for things that make you laugh. If you see nothing worth laughing at, pretend you see it, then laugh. Bernard's misanthropy clashes hilariously with his friend's attempts to get him to lighten up and venture out of his comfort zone. This often results in general mayhem and comedy gold. Bernard, Bernard, put your thing on. I'm back now. I know! <laughs> While the series did fairly well in the UK, it never quite broke through abroad, which is probably why it hasn't received the level of recognition it deserves. If caustic, cynical, or bizarre humor is your game, Black Books is a sitcom you won't be able to put down. Right, the shop is closed. Everybody get out. <laughs> Time to go home. Come on. It's only quarter to three. Yes, but it's my shop. Come on, go home. Bye-bye. Thank you. I'm, That's I'm, hardly fair. It's not fair at all. Get out. Number five, The Middle. The ABC sitcom The Middle aired for nine seasons and was adored by critics, but somehow it still managed to fly under most people's radars. You know, it was just so much fun over at the new neighbor's house. There were these guys watching the game and they were all friendly and festive. You didn't invite them over, did you? No, Mike. I didn't invite anybody over. Had a girl. The series follows Frankie and Mike Heck, a run-of-the-mill Midwestern couple trying to raise their three children in a small town. It's Spirit Week, so we dress up as something different every day. Didn't you notice yesterday I was dressed as a baby? Sure, Sue. Let's say I did. The family's middle-class lifestyle feels both true to and larger than life, with every character written to be very relatable, but also hilariously unique. They may not have had the razzle-dazzle of other sitcom families, but the Hex know just how to warm their way into your heart. Mike, we did teach them about stopping, right? I didn't think we had to. I think we had to. I mean, they're not even moving their heads. They're like statues. Look at her neck. That's gotta hurt. Don't let its name fool you. The middle is closer to the top than most people give it credit. Number four, Spaced. <laughs> Another Brit pick, Spaced is a cult hit sitcom that doesn't get nearly enough love. The show follows a group of 20-somethings whose misadventures in adulthood lead to outrageous hijinks ranging from imaginary gunfights to impromptu raves. Spaced balances odd yet somehow believable characters with hilarious reference-strewn comedy, and is only made more eccentric with its frenetic editing. It's a rare glimpse into the early cinematic style of visionary director Edgar Wright, as well as the brilliant comedic writing of Simon Pegg. Oh, hiya. Don't sneak up on me like that! Ooh. Want a cup of tea? Yes. Given the level of success their subsequent works have since attained, it's quite baffling that Spaced is as unknown as it is today. Number three, Benson. Where are you going, Frankie? Uh, see the governor? No, you're not. But the Historical Society's coming to dinner. Got some great jokes the governor can use. <laughs> you want to hear them? <laughs> you're not a joke writer, Frankie. You're a messenger. Please, I'm a curry. Then go curry. A spinoff of the soap opera parody series Soap, Benson follows the titular ex-butler running the household of a governor as he rises to become a politician himself. Often overshadowed by its parent show, Benson still proved to be a formidable sitcom. Oh, yes, I had a wonderful vacation. Thank you very much for asking. Benson, the clergy have to be picked up at the airport, and Rabbi Weiss sleeps with the board under his bed. The island was terrific. Palm trees and everything. Benson, you have to assign all the guest rooms to the clergy. Fortunately, the tidal wave put a damper on the revolution. With his sarcastic wit and one-liners making for the lion's share of the laughs, the titular character is undoubtedly the main attraction here, with a tremendous Emmy-winning performance by Robert Guillaume. However, that doesn't stop a bevy of outrageous personalities, such as the hopeless governor Eugene X. Gatling and his sharp-tongued chef Gretchen from Shining Through. I would like to speak to you about becoming a citizen. Well, I already am a citizen, Miss <laughs> You can't be governor unless you're a citizen. Well, that is what I want to be. Well, fine, but you will have to become a citizen first. Bottom line, Benson deserves to rise in public estimation just as much as the eponymous character deserves a raise. 
Number two, third rock from the sun. Mr. DeMarmo's office. Well, it certainly is. <laughs> well, how are you? Actually, I'm feeling a little dizzy. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're breaking up. Well, it's news to me. <laughs> you have to speak up. I thought that news to me. <laughs> okay, fine. But I just got here. A sitcom about aliens visiting Earth isn't exactly new, but rarely has it ever been done with as much skill as on Third Rock from the Sun. What's this? <laughs> The show follows a team of extraterrestrials who attempt to blend in as the Solomon family and navigate their school, work, and romantic lives. Not only is it hilarious to see the Solomons' reactions to all aspects of humanity we take for granted, but their efforts to be Earthlings are often as heartfelt as they are comedic. And if you think their behavior is silly, the humans can be just as bizarre. What, have they just never heard of you? How could that be? Well, Sally, I'm just a cop. But I, I won't stop number eight for speeding, though. <laughs> He let me off with a warning. This show may seem out of the world to many, but those who know can tell you Third Rock is far from second rate. This whole time we've been eating her slop and you're a damn gourmet! No, no, it's pot, I swear. I, I smoke it with my friends. I, I love to toke up on the fat daddies. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. News Radio NBC didn't know what they had with this one. Mr. James. Present! Buttafuoco. <laughs> well, Buttafuoco! We'll go to you too, Matthew. News Radio is an off-the-wall workplace comedy set at a radio broadcast station. Whereas most sitcoms of the time went right, News Radio took a hard left. So we're agreed then? Yes, we yes. just cannot. Yes, we simply cannot let uh, anybody find out. The show deliberately went against the grain, featuring its romantic leads getting together almost immediately or presenting bizarre one-off episodes with alternate settings and elaborate fantasy sequences. Bill's asleep! <laughs> Forever. But I'll play with you. <laughs> it had an all-star ensemble cast of comedy heavy hitters whose chemistry was just as fantastic as the writing. Had its time slot not been bounced around the week like a goofy ball, news radio probably would have the recognition it rightly deserves. Plus, after the death of star Phil Hartman shortly after the end of the fourth season, the show lost steam. Now, unless you want a stern talking to, you will track down the show and watch it immediately. But nothing! You know what we need around here is an anti-whining ordinance! So just sip your sniveling little lip and all your skinny ass out of here! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.